Take it away, John. Thank you, Austin. Uh, welcome, everybody, that's joining in our live clinic. And uh, this is live. I can actually see uh, any responses or any kind of questions or feedback that you're giving to us through the GoToWebinar function. And today I want to talk about a, a very uh, interesting topic, especially to designers or marketers who work closely with designers, and that's the topic of columns and page layout. Specifically, how many should I use? Uh, how many columns is right? Uh, when do I use it right? And it's interesting because uh, this is a kind of topic that never gets old. In fact, I was just on the phone I think it was late last week with uh, a, a recent Harvard graduate who's uh, starting off uh, kind of a niche uh, business, a new online business. He'd, he'd done some other businesses before and he had this very same question. He was wireframed some pages and we take a look at them and this very issue of page layout and page templates and the number of columns came up. And this is something that is critical, one of the critical things that he's working on for the future. So uh, I'd like to help you answer that today. And uh, before we get started, uh, if you haven't been with us before or um, you're just joining in, I'd like to let you know that in addition to using GoToWebinar, you can actually use Twitter, hashtag web, clin web clinics, excuse me. And <coughs> We actually monitor, I'm actually monitoring those right now. Jessica just made a post um, and so, and the rest of the team is monitoring that as well. So I encourage you to post either on uh, hashtag web clinic using the GoToWebinar functionality so that we can communicate back and forth as we go. Uh, a little bit about myself, uh, for those who are unfamiliar with me, I've been with Mech Labs uh, seven some years. Um, my hands have been on the research for uh, j just about uh, every single one of those years in, in different forms and I've overseen a number of partners. Uh, it's been a great privilege and it's been a lot of fun. And today I want to talk with you about some of the interesting findings that we were able to come up with. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let me ask you a question straight up. Given a choice between these particular page templates, if you could see you've got a, B, C, and D, and these are uh, just uh, templates here that you might find on the web. Which would you choose for your offer pages and why? I'm watching uh, your feedback and I'm going to take a step. Some, uh, somebody says A, uh, Victor says A, a lot of A's. We got some B's, okay, got a D, a B, uh, we've got a D and A. Uh, I see the results coming in and really it's kind of a mix and mash up here. It's, I don't see one particular version over another. Let me ask you guys a quick question. Why? Give me just in a couple of words, a couple of words, why would you actually choose one over the other? So I'm looking at your responses. I'm taking a closer look. Okay. A, uh, we've got message. Uh, okay. We've got clarity and focus. Uh, C is too busy. Like I like it clear. Okay. Simplicity. Okay. Here are the different reasons. What else do we have? Um, thought sequence. Okay, excellent, all right. Um, I'm watching those as they're coming in. So the point of this exercise is this. You may have some thoughts and opinions as to which page design, specifically the number of columns and the configuration of columns works best. You may have somebody that you know somewhere else in the industry that has a different opinion. One thing that you've probably become aware of now is the fact that you've got a number of different people from around the world answering the same question and they're all coming up with different responses. Some similar reasons, but you've got an issue there, especially if you're working with one of those people, you're gonna have to figure it out. So what additional data, what research could you use to help you make a better decision? What is the highest performing layout, specifically the number of columns for my web pages? And how do I know which one to choose? And this is a really important, I want to point out that this is going to be specifically for web pages. I'm already envisioning a follow-up clinic on emails and specific uh, channels where you can control the number of columns, but I'm asking this question like the rest of us, how many? What's the ideal amount? Is there an ideal amount? So, uh, I, and I kind of like to think of it like this. I, I'm, I'm sitting down at the restaurant. I don't know what, anybody, Cheesecake Factory, anybody like Cheesecake Factory? I, I really, uh, I, I like it. I've, they've got so many different menu items and it's so hard. I, I find myself debating between four or five, right? And I don't know how many times I tell the waiter to come back because I just can't decide, um, you know, what I feel like. And, and this is really kind of a similar situation. So let's cut through it. Which one is actually better than the other? Which one is going to satisfy me more and get the results? 
Let's start with an experiment. Here we've got TP1736A, and this is a large technology company selling software to small businesses. And their goal in this particular test was to significantly increase the number of software purchases from paid search traffic. And I want to make an important note here. These are branded terms. John, what are branded terms? Well, simply to say people included the brand name of the company in their search. So let's take a look at the control. Okay, here we've got a two-column layout. As you can see, uh, let's, let's simplify it for you here. You've got a two-column layout. Okay, you've got two clearly different sections of content. And now let's take a look at the treatment that was tested. So if you could see on the treatment, um, I want to make sure the whole audience is seeing. Um, we've got one column layout. Really, all we did here was eliminate that second column. And so let's take a look at it side by side real quick. The only difference, and I want you to understand this as you're looking at it minuscule, the only difference is the number of columns. We, that whole right column on the control was eliminated. So the text was just spread out, okay, over that, um, that pixel width. So let me get your thoughts. Audience, which one is the winner? Control or treatment? Two or one column? Okay, I'm taking a closer look. I've got one, two, one, 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 two, one. I've got a lot of ones, a lot of twos. I'm watching your response. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of ones coming through. I'm seeing a lot of ones. So uh, here we go, very good. Okay, so here's, here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing about 60, 40, actually more like a 70, 30 in favor, okay, of the one column versus the two column. So uh, it's not evenly divided, but it's, we're definitely see uh, kind of closer matchup than some others. So let's take a look at the result. Well, the uh, one columns have it for this particular test, 681% relative increase in orders. And um, not just orders, but if you take a look at the revenue per visit, we're actually at 607% increase in revenue per visit. Just a quick note, these numbers have been anonymized, so um, if you're looking for uh, average conversion rates, uh, don't bother. <laughs> so that leaves me with a important question, why? Why in this case did the single column page layout have a significant increase in results? And even beyond that, how is it that page columns can actually have an impact on results? Audience, let me ask you, okay? You are the researcher, you are the analyst in this situation. What would be your interpretation of the data? Okay, I'm watching it. Okay, less clutter. All right, I see, um, let me take a closer look here. We've got people, to, found it easier to read, okay, uh, less, less distractions, okay, limited uh, options, okay, uh, somebody say it's a disaster, okay, uh, I'm reading these as best I can, focus, iPath, excellent. So um, I'm taking a look at the interpretations that you're having and what I'd like to do now is I would like to actually compare your response to the analysts. So here we have a sample from the actual test protocol. Just a quick background from, uh, for the rest of everybody that's not familiar. For every single test that we show, there is a very well documented test protocol with numerous steps, measuring everything from the hypothesis, the variables, the values, okay, the metrics measured, the uh, different forms, the four major forms of validity, okay, as well as interpretation and statistical uh, significance data analysis. So uh, it's part of our certification process, so we take this very seriously. And um, looking at what they've written initially, some quotes here, the iPath of the page is confusing to the users. And uh, so what is the best way to overcome these problems? They hypothesize that by providing a linear iPath, distractions will be removed and will cause an increase in conversion. So for those of you that said anything remotely close to that about re removing distractions, about a clear iPath, kind of a, a simpler flow, then you are actually in line with how the researchers were planning this test. Encouraging, right? If you, if you found yourself there, then you should feel encouraged. You're beginning to think, again, like a marketer who wants to know what really works and how they can use that in other tests. And I'm not surprised to say that when we took a deeper look at a number of tests that we've run, we're finding similar results. 
you take a look at this. You go from a kind of a two column layout with a very similar kind of phenomenon happening here with the content to a single column layout. The results of TP1306, 266% increase in clicks. And another one. Now this is an actual transaction page, okay, for an e-commerce cart. I want you to pay close attention. It starts off, looks like a lot, uh, one of the templates we showed at the beginning. It starts off kind of with one column, but then it dives immediately into two equally weighted columns, I guess to shorten the page length. And here we've got one column on the right, a completely linear flow. What was the result? 22% increase in completed orders. Just by taking that same content and stacking it on top of each other. So, which this brings me to a question. Is there an underlying theory for choosing the highest performing page layout? And have we come close to it? Have we reached that kind of theory? And uh, I want to ask you guys, based on what you see, do you, do you see a pattern response here, especially those who have been on multiple clinics? What would you, how would you answer this question? And I'm just taking a look at your responses to see if anybody's responded. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, we've, uh, that's yes from Christian. What else? Anybody else? Okay. Simplicity. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, take care of the iPath. All right. I'm watching. Yes. Linear iPath. So what you're finding or what you're also seeing is that this is perhaps something that we can use as a guide to understanding uh, how we choose columns and how we lay out a page. Well, our team wanted to make sure that these could you be universally applied. They felt like they were onto something. So they wanted to run an additional test. Now, I want to point out something very important. This is the same exact test, except non-branded search terms. What do I mean by non-branded search terms? Meaning, um, when they were typing into the search engine, what they were looking for they didn't put the company's name, they didn't put a company like Verizon or something into the search terms, they just put you know, cool phones or something like that. Now that's not the industry here, but uh, that hopefully that will help you understand what's really going on. So here are the same two treatments tested, again, in the same channel but with a different search group. Now I'm curious. What do you guys think would be the result? Okay, you're the researchers, you've seen one result, you've seen other results, can we expect the same? Yes or no? Let me see. Anybody, uh, yes, it's going to be the same result, no, it's going to be different. I see a lot of yeses, okay? I see a lot of yeses, let's see. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, we've got one person, I think it's Nelson that says it's different. Okay, same result. Okay, we've got one, I've got Victor is going to column. Okay, Victor, thank you for being brave. All right. Um, Let's uh, continue, a couple more. We've got, okay, we've got another two column. Okay, we've got yes, but not as big of a difference. Okay, I think that's from Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay, I see a lot of yes, it's going to be the same. Yes, this is a transferable learning. And honestly, the rest of us want to know here with this analysis so that we can continue to optimize all of our channels. Well, here's the result. 85 percent relative decrease in orders. And not just in orders, but look at the revenue per visit. 67 percent relative decrease. I looked at the data. I was like, no, this can't be right. I looked at the certification process. I looked at all the different validity factors. And yeah, I can't deny the fact that for this ad group, they, it was a decrease. So that leads me to a question, right? Why? If I see a number of different pages in my testing experience, if I'm that marketer and I've done my own testing and I've seen this and then I run this other test and I confirm it, why in the world would this particular page underperform, especially if the test was set up right? especially if all the validity factors were accounted for. Why? Why did the winning page suddenly underperform in the same channel? It reminds me uh, of many instances in life where uh, I might approach a person or a relationship and um, the same way that I approached another one. And while I would get a conversation or a second conversation or maybe 
five minutes instead of two, all of a sudden uh, they, <laughs> they would just not even continue the conversation. I'd do the same thing, but it wouldn't work. And it would confuse me. Uh, it happens a lot in life, right? You could probably think of a situation where you tried something and it worked a lot, but all of a sudden it's no longer working, right? My a last example would be um, pulling all-nighters. <laughs> I could do it in college, but I can't do it now. I just fall over or something. So what would you do next? Tell me. If you had to answer this question and you were trying to find an answer, I'm looking at your responses, what would you do as the researcher next to try and answer this? Okay? We're getting a lot of questions, okay? Right? Opt, okay, let me take a look, closer look here, uh, number of keywords, look at the content, okay, we've got look at the content, look at the visitor list, okay, what else do we have? Keep, keep them coming. Okay, one column works best, uh, you know, on one sort of channel, okay. That, what would you do next though, right? These are, these are kind of observations, but where, how would you find this answer? What test would you set up? Where would you go from here? Especially if your boss is demanding to see how the second test is going and then all of a sudden invalidates everything we were working on. What would you do? Okay, video, okay, let's see. Um, you try a three column setup, okay. A second column provides a trust indicator, so you might change the second column, okay? So you might begin to, to set up different tests around those um, and, and continue to figure out what's going on. Well, let's take a look. This is what we decided to do. This really got under my skin. Um, when we were taking a look at this test as it came in, I got obsessed, I'm sorry. And um, so I asked uh, that we and the team, that we'd actually conduct a meta-analysis. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar uh, with this, we, we've got a very, very large uh, library of experiments. This is just a screenshot from one of the um, kind of indexes that we published just uh, with a sample from 2008 to 2012. So it's, very, it's large and it's very thick. Um, dead, you know, I don't want to have to bring it to the airplane. It's, it's very thick, right? But we accessed this library and we used it to conduct the study and we isolated tests where page layout, specifically the number of columns, were a primary variable. Then we conducted what we call a meta-analysis. Okay? And what I mean by a meta-analysis is we take a look at all of those test protocols. And this is just a sample. I, uh, you'd probably need about five or six pages for this specific kind of um, meta-analysis. But we conducted a meta-analysis to try and find patterns. right? Uh, are there exceptions to the rule? Is there kind of a general rule that I could start with and then look for an exception? What can I rely on when I look at a much larger sample of data? Well, initially when we ran this analysis, this is what we discovered. The initial findings showed that there appeared to be performance patterns for each page in the conversion path. So this is how the kind of the, the test protocols organize themselves. And when I say patterns, I'm, I say specific column configurations. So for the directory page, there would be a specific kind of ideal column configuration. For the main offer page, so like a landing page or a product page, again, you would have a different kind of uh, you know, optimal <coughs> configuration. And then the transaction page, you would have the same thing. It looked like they each had kind of a template, um, an ideal column template. But upon looking at these individual protocols, there is one thing that I noticed, is that the patterns weren't clear. Um, there are actually numerous outliers. I'm not sure if you could see those orange circles on your screen, but there are a number of outliers. And whenever I see outliers, I feel uh, trouble. Okay? I want to understand what the outliers are, what they mean, and how this affects what I'm trying to learn, because I want an answer. I don't have time to test everything. I want to know where to start, how to guide my designers, and how to move forward so that I don't have to use so much time and resources trying to get an answer. So let's take a look at the outliers to try and understand uh, exactly where some of the trouble is. So here was an outlier. This is an, a, a transaction page. We had three columns versus two, and you, know, you could see that how the third column is being used in terms of content. Uh, anybody want to take a guess uh, which one won? Uh, probably no surprise. Anybody want to take a guess? Two, three, three, two, three, two, 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 three, okay. So I got a number of twos, some threes, probably about 70, 30. They both won. This was actually one of my, um, my first big aha tests. 
um, it was really interesting um, and it kind of shocked me at first. Uh, one that I oversaw in which the revenue per order for one, for a traffic coming from the home page was significantly different from the revenue per order on the shopping cart traffic page. And when we conducted a competitive analysis, we discovered why. Um, very interesting test, but that's not all. Here's another outlier, just an example. And again, these are select test protocols from a number of them, but they all kind of represent the same kind of outlier pattern. We've got a main offer page, a two column layout and a one column layout. Even though it looks slightly different, I want you to know that the content is exactly the same. All they've, they've done is they've brought the tabs up into the main area above the T's and C's, or just kind of the, you know, the, the small print. What do you think? Two or one? Got a lot of ones. Okay, some twos. I'm watching you guys come through. Got a lot of twos. So you guys are catching on to the, the, the pattern here, right? Actually, the two column layout did better. And it, again, it brings up an interesting question. These are all distractions in the, in the right, or um, in terms of how you could see it, right or left. On that side column, they're not even directly related to the call to action. Why in the world would this one perform better? And then finally, here's another example, directory page. Oftentimes, these are category pages, home pages. Okay, you've got a three column and a one column. Which one was the winner? Well, they both were. The three column, and this is a, this is a, a, a European travel site, okay, booking flights, hotels, you know, think Expedia, but Europe, okay. 5.8% increase in searches, which is a lot, considering the volume in everyday traffic, but when you simplify it, it actually equates to an increase for holiday traffic. So it's really interesting. It's like you can't run one um, at one time or another at the other time. Again, another outlier, and this is something we would describe as history effect, which brings me back to the original question. Let me ask you, I've shown you a number of results. I've shown you some findings. Do you believe that we could find an underlying theory? Guys, I'm not here to tell you there is or there isn't. I just wanted to know. That's why we conducted the analysis. But now that we have the results, I want to ask you, based on what you're seeing thus far, which is the same thing that we were viewing in the same sequence, what would you expect? I'm waiting for your responses. I'm actually going close so I could see. Uh, I think it depends on how they got there, says, uh, I think it's Scott. Um, test, test, says Lee. Uh, okay. Um, yes, says Jeffrey. Clear path to call to action. Okay. Uh, so there, I see a lot of folks that are kind of saying, yes, there could be an underlying theory, um, but they're not sure necessarily what it is. I've got one that says, depends on the structure of the visitor. Okay, I, I've got to know. Laura, thank you. <laughs> thank you for, you know, participating here. So this is the same kind of question that we had. Well, let's analyze that test against the meta-analysis results. And let's see if we can figure this out. So here's the thing. If you take a closer look at that original test that we proposed to you, with both of the pages winning with different groups, their position is essentially the same in the conversion funnel. And when I say conversion funnel, I'm talking about kind of a fallout funnel you'll, you would build like in Site Catalyst or, or a, a Google Analytics, you know, a kind of a conversion goal funnel, right? It's essentially in the same place. But if you think about where they're coming from, they are not in the same position in what I would call the customer funnel. What I mean specifically is this. A web search using brand language would indicate to me, as somebody doing data analysis, that there's prior knowledge of the value proposition. Either in a broad form, they we say that brand is just the aggregate experience, okay, of all the messaging, right? Either that or maybe they've been to the site before. Maybe they've uh, been there a couple times. Maybe they spent time, they left and they came back, or maybe they came back from another device. But the point is, is they indicated some prior knowledge, whereas the generic web search does not. And I don't know, honestly, if they've received any of that value. This has happened to me in multiple tests where I would do the same exact test in different just ad groups. And the only difference would be branded versus non-branded. And I would see the significant difference. Okay? So here's the thing. Given this kind of insight and just different perspective, 
we decided to recategorize each protocol in the analysis using that uh, frame of mind. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with the graphic on the screen, uh, if you haven't seen kind of, uh, I think it's 15 years of research in 11 minutes from Dr. Flint, um, what we're talking about here is this thing called the inverted funnel in which gravity is not your friend. It's working against you. And in order to uh, kind of influence somebody to make a decision, a, a transaction, a purchase decision or a commitment, like a contractual commitment, right? You need to influence them and answer a series of questions called micro yeses. And you could have multiple micro yeses on the same page. Um, is there anything for me to read on this page? Headline, subheadline. Okay, great. Well, um, is there any particular, like they begin to answer these questions and all it takes is one no to stop the entire process. And that could be extended over multiple devices, multiple visits. Honestly, sometimes it's hard to see. So using this kind of uh, approach, we discovered a single pattern. And that was this. At the beginning of the thought sequence, the highest performing pages in this analysis, meaning the ones that got the greatest gains, were those that often had three or more columns evenly weighted. Okay, right? And I'm talking the very beginning of the thought sequence. I think of a directory page, honestly. Um, you know, and I've seen directory style pages used as paid search landing pages that have outperformed other ones. But we're seeing this constant pattern that uh, people that indicate they're earlier seem to need more columns. But that's not all. As we looked um, through each page type um, and actually the source traffic, column counts in high performing pages dropped as the thought sequence progressed. Okay, and oftentimes if you, have, uh, if you don't have a single column, you have two columns. And if you have two columns, they're usually unevenly weighted where you have a primary column of 80% and maybe a secondary column of 20% or 70-30. So this brings me kind of to a conclusion and, and this was kind of the, the big result and it comes to the issue of columns. First, we have to understand that there is no single answer to this question. And we're not just saying that, we're saying that based off of a meta-analysis and detailed interpretation and examination of multiple experiments with statistical significance. Okay, how many columns should I use? Well, sometimes less is optimal and sometimes more is optimal. And I like to think of it like this. Have you ever known anybody that could just talk their way out of a relationship? out of a friendship, out of the next conversation. The, uh, and, and feel free to communicate with me. Have you ever known anybody that just uh, you like but you don't necessarily like to talk to? You? Maybe for that very reason. Well, perhaps they're saying too much too soon. Perhaps you don't know them enough. Or perhaps you didn't strike the right common interest. But either way, you've essentially talked yourself out of the conversation or in sales terms, you've talked yourself out of the sale. Right when they say yes, what color, right? So to begin answering the question about columns, we have to think first about where the customer is in the mental, not physical conversion funnel. Where are they at in terms of their understanding? Where are they at in terms of uh, their relationship with you? Their conversation with you? Are you starting a conversation with them in which you need to kind of lead them up to that point of ask? Or are you continuing a conversation where really you're at that point where you guys both have kind of talked and now they finally have time to go onto your site and actually begin the transaction process. They just want to make sure that they're at the right place. So if you understand that, then think about these two things when you're trying to choose page layout and columns. The more we know about what the visitor wants, the more we should focus. And again, the farther along you are in the conversation, the more you know about somebody, a relationship, a friend, then you're going to focus on the interests that you guys like. So you enjoy the time together, right? That usually equates to less columns and unequally weighted columns, right? Because you're trying to focus it on one conversation. But the less you know about a visitor, then we've got to spend more time enabling them to tell us what they're interested in. Uh, if I'm just meeting somebody the first time, I'm going to be trying to just probe interests just very lightly to try and figure out what it is that they're interested in that I'm also interested in. And I want to strike up a conversation on that. But in order to do that, I can't go too deep 
again, uh, referring to my uh, relationship with my wife, too deep into martial arts and like monster trucks or something. I've got to find something that we're both equally interested in first and then focus and expand the pipe. So um, I want to thank everybody uh, first and foremost and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we've, uh, you found some value. I think, I don't know if we have any time for live optimization. Um, at this point, uh, we've got four minutes. I think we have time for one. But first, before we go to that, uh, they, they kind of got this slide in here. We've uh, the 2014 Sherpa e-commerce benchmark uh, study. Uh, we encourage you to participate. We want to get your insights. We do research. We can't do research without the help of those who um, provide us the feedback in the real time uh, behavior. So please uh, go to this and, and participate. You'll get a chance to win. It looks like an iPad Air. So let's go to live optimization. I probably have time for at least one, uh, is that right? And then I need to go uh, to one final piece, one final experiment. One final experiment. So let's take a look at uh, Tracky. Uh, their primary audience is, um, I'm reading on the screen, business to consumers, and their primary objective is awareness. Everybody, tell me what you would do differently to this page, very quickly. Um, how would you help uh, Tracky right now? Uh, they need help. So uh, I'm watching you guys, okay? Add a value uh, proposition, thank you. That's, that's very helpful. More copy, say what it is. More info, replace the three word uh, you know, with the value prop, okay? Uh, here we go, mission statement. Um, who, who are they, says Lynn. Um, there's just too many colors going on. Well, let's cut to the chase. Um, if I were helping you guys to set up an experiment and I was um, suggesting different optimization principles, I'd start with the very top. Let's scroll to the top, Luke and team. Uh, tracky, what in the world is Tracky? Uh, what are we tracking? Um, it, it almost seems kind of like, it, this kind of looks like um, it should be on Sprout, the uh, kid show that my baby watches uh, every day. Uh, really, I mean, not to be degrading, but really, I mean, it's got all the primary colors. It looks very friendly to, and my daughter would love it, honestly, um, but she's probably not your audience. So instead, you probably should reduce the focus on the logo. You probably should take the headline and actually say something that they would be interested in. Connect, collaborate, share, what does that mean? Um, what I would say is, actually, honestly, I don't know what that means, so I can't give you a new headline, but come up with the headline that actually answers, where am I at, what can I do here, and why should I do it? Literally, in two lines. Headline, subheadline. where am I at, what can I do here, why should I do it? Okay, and the background image, though, uh, I guess uh, kind of design savvy, cute, um, it's just posing a distraction. The audience themselves said that, hey, they're having a hard time looking past it. Do something less, okay? Now, let's take a look at columns. We've got two columns here. We've got video or sign up now. Which one do you want me to do? Do you want me to sign up? Do you want me to watch the video? Is the video important to sign up? Which column do I engage with first? Why should I engage with one column first? Which column's more important? They're equally weighted. I would say your sign up now, um, especially if they don't know you, this is a directory page, less emphasis on the sign up now, more emphasis on the content that's gonna kit their interest, right? That's what I would recommend to you. Um, so let's quickly move on to the next one. One more, okay, and then let's do one final experiment. So I'm gonna click forward. Uh, guys, if you could advance the slide for me. Okay, here we go. Um, and I'm seeing on the screen, oh, those are some white teeth. Uh, Santa Fe Way. Health enthusiasts are the primary audience, and primary objective is an information page. I, I can't stop staring at those teeth. I need to go to the dentist. It's, wow, I, I'm feeling inferior here. Um, right away, I'm distracted. I, I have no idea what this means. All I see is a navigation. The navigation is the only clue that I have as to what I can do and why should I do it, and there's hardly anything. In fact, the navigation is stacked in such a way that I don't know what's connected to what. The picture, uh, I have, this guy looks suspicious. <laughs> he looks like he's gonna do something. He's like, I got an idea for you, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, here's the pose. I, and and the, the lady's like, oh my God, what's next? Uh, sorry for the, the, the language, but listen, I, right away you've lost me, but now as I scroll down, I might get an idea. I've got three columns, but I've got multiple kind of boxes. Start over, as Flint said, this isn't the page that you try and fix. This is a page that you burn up and throw away and start over. So start giving me a headline, a subheadline. take that picture, and if it actually adds value, if you can connect it to the text in some clear and fit way, then, then you can minimize it and put it to the side, okay? You can maybe have this supporting column, okay? But start me with a conversation. Give me a headline, subheadline, and a, just a short body to get my engagement, and then give me something to be interested in. I'm assuming that this is kind of a directory page. So 
those are some feedback for you. I've got one last experiment I'd like to show you, and then we're going to wrap up. Guys, if you could advance me to the final piece, I'd appreciate it. Okay? So we're going to look at one final experiment. Thank you, team. I really appreciate it. And this is something that we're going to feature on our next clinic. Does anybody here do emails, promotional emails? Probably. Um, they're really important. We've actually got a test of a promotional email, 2136, a large, well-known audio technology engineering company offering professional and personal audio products. They want to increase clicks. So they're testing call to action. Let's take a look. Here's the template. Okay? This template has been decolorized and kind of uh, uh, blurred for anonymization. Let's just scroll down the template real quick so you guys can get a sense of what, how long it is. It looks like a mobile template as well, um, based on the size and everything. Now let's take a look at what was tested. The only thing that was tested here was the call to action copy, shop now. In the three different places, I didn't anonymize the color here, but in the three different places, you've got shop now connected to three different groups of products. Version B, few details. Same exact subcopy, same exact colors, maybe even the same exact button size. Um, I'm pretty sure. View details and shop now. Let me ask you, which one would you vote for? Which one do you think is going to get the most clicks? I'm seeing the results coming in, okay? I'm seeing the results coming in, excellent. We've got everything from shop now, view details. I got a lot of view details. I've got some shop nows. Looks like about, uh, again, 60 40 in favor of view details. We'll, we'll reveal that to you live next week. Or actually, not next week, in about, I think it's a couple weeks. February 12 at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to reveal to you the answer to that, as well as uh, answers to some of the common questions we get relative to this kind of testing, i.e., how can I get the most click through for the least amount of effort in the body of an email? Uh, which call to action copy works for promotional emails? Which is the best? And then finally, I get this question a lot. How is it different for newsletters and maybe uh, uh, nurture campaigns, nurture drip campaigns? So uh, there you have it. Everybody, I want to thank you again for, uh, for joining us in this webinar. Um, if, you, um, if you found this valuable, uh, there's two things that you can do for us. One, at the end of the survey, let us know what you would like to test. And honestly, I just want to know, would you guys like to see the same kind of column analysis on emails? Okay, would you like to see the same kind of body, um, uh, page layout, page template kind of analysis on emails? Let me know that. And then secondly, if there's anything else that you want us to test or you want to know about, use kind of the, uh, the feedback as a way to tell us, or you could just type it in here, we'll, we review every line. And uh, also, if you're interested in conducting research with us, just uh, also use the feedback tool, or you can just contact us directly. I uh, thank you again, everybody, for joining us live, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.